Good afternoon and welcome to this edition of Ministry Shift Extra. And uh, we thought it'd be timely uh, this afternoon to think a little bit about opening our churches, particularly for private prayer. If we thought going into lockdown was complicated and difficult, getting out of lockdown <laughs> promises to be infinitely more complex and difficult. But no, we shall not despair because we have four wonderful panellists here who are not here to tell us how it's done, but to reflect on what they're doing and how they're uh, coping with this and some of the implications for their wider ministry. So I'd like to introduce them to you, and I'm going to start by asking Rich to say a little, about, a little bit about himself. Hi, I'm uh, Rich Clarkson, and I am rector of five parishes up in North Shropshire. Thank you. And uh, Marg? Hi, I'm Marg Mattox, and I'm the vicar of two parishes in Wolverhampton, Codsall and Codsall Wood. And Adrian? Hi, I'm Adrian Stone. I'm the vicar of Trenton, which is just on the south of the city of Stoke-on-Trent. And finally to Jim. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm the rector at St Matthew's Church in Warsaw, a civic centre church. And I'm Matthew Parker, the Archdeacon of Stoke-upon-Trent. Welcome to you all. So, um, the government uh, and uh, has given us permission to open up our churches uh, after them having been locked for such a long time. Mm. And uh, it's a limited opening up. We, we can let people in for private prayer. And it's also possible now for some funerals to take place. So I just thought we'd go around and see what, what the practice is at the moment, what you're doing in response to this or what you're not doing. Um, Rich. So I've got five village churches and we've got different sort of responses in the different villages so two of the churches are going to be opening at specific times in the week um, for an hour or so so that where they'll be supervised and people can come in uh, to pray at those times two other churches have nominated particular individuals who can be contacted to sort of arrange an appointment to go in and pray and then one of the churches um, uh, are not opening at all at the moment and we're we're still working out some of the logistics as to how that might happen but in that place it doesn't feel safe or sensible to do so um, just yet. Mm -hmm. Thank you so a mixed picture in contrast to a multi-parish rural benefits Jim you've got the one church to, to think about what, what's your kind of strategy? Uh, well as of half an hour ago we are opening twice a week for two hours uh, initially we're starting very very slowly um, we've got a massive great big building but it, with the two meter rule it's amazing how few uh, people you can actually fit even in that situation so we're taking it nice and slowly very steady we've got health and safety as a priority um sanitizing stations as people come in a one-way system in the church and we've even produced a video which is on our youtube channel and in facebook links and social media links so people can see what to expect and how to do it when they arrive mm. great uh, you can watch that on youtube Yes. And Marg, um, how's it going in Codsall? How, what, what are you doing? Well, uh, we're taking it slightly slowly. I, I think I've had a bit of an advantage because I have internal decorators in who have been blitzing the church, really, every, every corner of it. But that's given me time to break down things in a way that I feel like we can manage. The majority of my congregation are 70 plus, so that has its implications for resources uh, and what we can and can't do. And a bit like the ministers that have already spoken, it's a mixed bag. In one church, we're not going to be able to open for the time being. It's not practical. There's no toilets and no water facilities. It's very, very small uh, and is usually anyway only open once a fortnight. Um, but in the other church, which is a large church, as Jim said, it's amazing how few you can get into a large church. Uh, and, and we decided to just use a section of the church to make it easier on cleaning. And we too have started to do a video that will take people through what they can expect when they come into the church with a one way system. Thank you. And are you open, Trentham, Adrian, at all? It, it sounds like we've had a very similar discussion to Jim this morning and uh, we're hoping to go for two sessions a week, partly because of the 72-hour rule. Is that your thinking, Jim? So that we can open on a Sunday 
um, probably reasonably early afternoon to give us 72 hours and then open on a Wednesday in the evening to give us 72 hours before the next um, Sunday. So that's our plan at the moment uh, for a couple of hours each time um, to, to have hand sanitizer everywhere you go. I've just had a delivery of a huge pot of it. Um, very, very um, light um, liquid, very watery. So you can use like a spray. We've got one of these spraying machines where you put your hand on it and it sprays your hands automatically. And um, one way system. And uh, we're going to go for green and red backed cards where if you've sat somewhere you flip it over to red yeah. um, so it means that somebody's not going to come and sit where you've been um, that's what we're, where we're at at the moment thank you Adrian and the 72 hour thing being that um, they reckon that's the length of time this virus could survive outside yeah. the host so you should be safe after 72 hours mm. um, I, I, I pick up as I kind of ring around, talk to clergy, that some have felt under a little bit of pressure to move perhaps more quickly than they want to, mm. or perhaps the, they don't quite feel that their church, um, it's the appropriate thing for them to do. Have any of you sensed that pressure? And if you have, where's it coming from, do you think? Jim? Um, yeah, we've not had any pressure from the diocese or anything like that. We've had uh, a little bit of pressure from those um, people in our church who aren't internet enabled. Mm -hmm. uh, and for whom place is really, really important. Um, uh, ironically, of course, there many of them are actually self-isolating anyway or in the vulnerable category, so many of them won't come back even when we do reopen. Um, and ironically, within uh, 24 hours of the announcement to be made by the government, we had a funeral uh, booking for the church as well. Uh, Other people it, experienced the kind of pressure, Marg, have you felt that? Yeah. And, yes, and... I, yeah, absolutely. I have, I, I have felt the pressure from people who want to just get in the church, um, and and I think that the struggle has been for me is making sure that I understand what it will mean for people to enter our church, and of course that keeps changing, <laughs> and so you try and get a a, a process agreed. Um, and all of a sudden an announcement is made and and everything goes belly up and you feel like you're starting again. And um, for people who really want to get back to um, what they would see as normality, it, it is a real challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been hard. We, we, you know, we have had people who have left the church, resigned from the church. So, um, yeah. yes, yes. It, it is a serious point for some people. Mm. You know, that, Rich, how, how have you kind of handled the decision-making process around all this? Um, I've tried to basically be guided by the church wardens in each of the different villages um, in terms of deciding whether we're going to open or not, um, recognising that in large part they'll be the ones responsible for opening and overseeing the opening of the churches because obviously I can't be in five places um, but also in a slightly odd situation wherein I'm moving in a month's time to a new parish so a lot of the decision making going forward they'll have to be sort of making so hopefully in sort of helping them to make these decisions now it will it will sort of set them up for, for continuing to make those decisions as the reopening sort of continues. Yeah and Adrian before we came on air you were saying that you felt there's a little bit of a kind of push from people outside the life of the church, people who had heard it on the news and thought, oh, go on, I'll come and yeah. pop down to Trenton Church and say my prayers. Yeah, I think there was kind of a headline of churches can now be open or churches will now be open. And uh, and then there's a sudden expectation from um, the public that the place will be open, the gates will be open, the door will be open and, uh, and they can go in. And they may never have wanted to go in before, but suddenly they do because they've heard that they, it's, it's possible. And... Uh, I, which is which is great and for us we're a bit out of the way in Trenton but we do have a lot of footfall at the moment because people are walking a lot um, around the the back of the gardens and so people I think will want to just go in and spend a, a moment in prayer and people who wouldn't usually come into church so there is an opportunity there mm. but definitely pressure to uh, that the church should be open now from the public which is interesting yeah rich um one of the challenges that we that we're sort of wrestling with along those same lines is the 
communicating clearly that people are able to come in for prayer, but it's not open for tourism. And I think it's not always easy to sort of make that distinction to people. Well, the church is open for an hour on a Monday morning, but that doesn't mean you can come and have a look around. That's or if you want to come and pray. Um, and and how, how do you how do you happen. distinguish whether someone is there as a tourist or a pilgrim? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, yeah. Leave your camera by the door. Yeah, <laughs> Mark. Um, Mark, you. Uh, this is a public health thing, isn't it? Really, I mean, we're 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 doing all this because we want to keep people safe, particularly yes. vulnerable people, and um, yes. and that that's a pressure on on a burden. A great perhaps. pressure. Um, but, yeah. but, so what do you think what do you think need, you need what's been helpful to you in get feeling you're getting this in inverted commas right i think it for me it stems from my sincere um belief in being given the cure of souls for the whole parish so that means whatever i decide to do in that church has got to be something that is as safe as it can be for the whole parish and that's a message I'm, I'm getting over. I'm trying to get over by doing, uh, communicating it all the time. That, that it isn't that we don't want to open the church. It's that I want to be sure that we've got all the resources we need. Um, and I think, I, I just think we need clear communication lines that comes in one form. So I'm getting information that's sometimes absolutely overwhelming me. Um, so I'm getting information from the government, I'm getting something from the Church of England website, and I'm getting something from insurance companies. And so I'm trying all the while to work out the, the best process that will enable all of those things. And to it feels like I'm holding back the tide sometimes because people uh, will read the headlines that says funerals in, in church from this date. And they're, they're not reading that the words may open, or, you know, uh, my, uh, the wording isn't quite clear sometimes, I think, and people yeah. are jumping to the conclusions. Jim, are you feeling like you're being deluged with guidelines and directions and information? Um, yes, and I'd say some of it is uh, contradictory as well, yes. which it makes it even worse and you know, much harder. I mean, part of the problem is there is no clear way forward. And so trying to anticipate what will come next, which we're thinking will probably be a one meter rule or something like that, and that'll make a significant difference. Um, but yeah, that, I think that's th the initial challenge is actually trying to work out what guidance is helpful and what isn't. Yeah, and I don't want to depress you, but I mean, obviously this is only the first step, isn't it? There'll be now coming along down the pipe will be weddings, um, some form of public worship, and there'll be a lot of hard thinking that needs to be yes. done. Fortunately, we, I've, I've got a team of people who are working together um, to actually work out stage by stage, phased opening and how to do it. Mm. Uh, and they've been a couple of weeks ahead of most of the thinking or the guidance that's come out. So that's made life much easier for us. And some churches will have those kind of resources, but perhaps rich, not always in small rural churches with, mm. I don't know, perhaps, I'm, perhaps that's wrong. Perhaps you've got a great team, a, a recovery group meeting, I don't know. I mean, we have got um, a really good team of wardens in this benefice, um, but one of the challenges is there are 10 of them or nine of them and plus me at the moment, and we can't meet more than six people. Um, so again, the sort of decision making, it would be great to meet as a whole group and um, work some of these things out, but that's not practical until the guidelines change and we're able to do um, mm -hmm. meet in slightly larger groups. So. The logistical challenges um, are, feel overwhelming at times. Mm. Adrian, do you think you've got the support you need to get get on top of this? Yeah, we have. We've we've used the risk assessment that came out, yeah. um, and we found that quite a helpful document just to start the, the conversations going. And um, we're we're having. Um, we're supporting a local business actually by having one, a, a kind of a big stand with a kind of welcome and a sanitizer point and all of this stuff. But we decided to to add to it a, a kind of perspex holder for A4 sheets. As the rules change, we can just keep changing what the information says at the front because it, we know it will be changing. Yeah, it could be weekly. What we have to what we have to put on there really. Well, thank you very much for all you're doing. And uh, thank you for being on Ministry Shift this afternoon. Uh, this is 
part of an ongoing conversation and an ongoing challenge to us. I mean, let's thank God that we can open up our churches and offer that hospitality uh, to people to come and pray and engage um, with, with God in that way, but um, not to underestimate the kind of challenges it presents to clergy and PCCs and church mm. wardens. But thank you for being with us. Thank you for watching uh, until we're back again on Monday, 4.30, Ministry Shift. Do share this if you're on Facebook or on Twitter. Let other people know about the programme. But until then, goodbye.